Hello everyone, this is Junaid here from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I'm going to talk about deploying our machine learning model using Heroku. So without any further ado, let's take a look at today's agenda. We'll start this session by understanding what is meant by deploying our model and what are the various ways we can achieve it. Then we'll be looking into Flask framework followed by building our own machine learning model and setting up our Heroku API. Once we are done with the setup, we shall then deploy our machine learning model. Before we begin, do consider subscribing to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated on trending technologies. And also, if you're looking for machine learning certification training, check out the link given in the description box below. All right, so what is meant by deploying a model? Well, you see, deployment is a method by which you integrate a machine learning model into an existing production environment to make a practical business decision based on the data. It is one of the last stages in machine learning lifecycle and sometime can be a tedious job to do. Now you might be wondering, how do I deploy this machine learning model? Well, the answer for this is quite simple. We have not one or two platforms, but a handful of them. Some of the popular platforms can be Google Cloud Platform, Heroku, AWS Lambda, Microsoft Azure, and many more. Well, speaking about a pipeline to deploy a model, well, it's quite simple. We first work on our machine learning or a deep learning model and once we are confident with its prediction, we then integrate it with a web application framework like Flask, Django or React to name a few. While developing a framework, you will have to work on marriage between front end part as well as the back end. You see front end part deals with end user experience and back end is where the logic works. Finally, you will deploy it on a server. And here the server that we are going to use is Heroku. So moving ahead, let us now talk about Flask. So what is Flask framework? Well, Flask is a web framework. And what this means is Flask provides with tools, libraries and technologies that allows you to build web applications. This web application can be a, some web page, a blog, a wiki, or can be as big as calendar application or commercial website. Well, Flask is a part of categories of micro framework. Micro framework are normally framework with little to no dependencies to external libraries. This has pros and cons as well. The pros of this can be framework is light as there are little dependencies to update and watch for security bugs. The major cons for this is that sometimes you will have to work with more yourself or increase yourself with list of dependencies by adding plugins. So let me now quickly show you how we can install flask on a system and let's see how we can work around it. So what I'm going to do here is first off go down to my anaconda and create a virtual environment and from there I'm going to install my flask. So let me quickly go to my anaconda here. And in order for us to activate our virtual environment, you will do conda environment. You'll be using conda activate. Now, if you haven't created your virtual environment, all you need to do is conda create hyphen n followed by the name of your environment. So now that I've already created it, all I'm gonna do is conda activate the name of my virtual environment. And now what we're gonna do is we will be getting into folder. So the folder that I've created here is demo. So now within this folder is completely empty. It has nothing else here. So what I'm going to do is first off in order to install flask, all you'll do is just write a simple command. That is pip install flask. So here it says the requirement already satisfied. That's because I've already installed flask in my system. But if you're installing flask for the first time, it would take some time to download the dependencies and install Flask on your system. So now that we have installed Flask, what we're gonna do is we'll go down to our code editor and see how we can work around Flask. So let me quickly jump to my VS code. So I'm in the same folder that is demo. So here what we are gonna do is we'll create one file and we'll save this as app.py. So there is nothing great that we are doing here. It's a simple Python file whose name is app.py. So now what we are going to do is we are going to import Flask. So from Flask, import Flask. And let's see whether we have connected to our correct Python environment. That's Flask demo. So now what's going to happen is let's quickly run our code over here. So we are not getting any error. That means we have successfully installed Flask. And now what we are going to do is let's create a small web page. Let's just see what happens. First off, what we'll do is we'll have app and then we'll create an object of a flask and here we'll pass the name and then we'll have our app dot run. But before that, what we're going to do is we're going to use route. So at app dot route 
I'll show you what is this argument that we are going to pass here and then we'll define a function define hello this function can be anything and this function will return hello world and now we'll call this function that is app.run but before that we'll have if name equal equals method main if this is the case then what we'll do is we'll run the app and now coming down to this part over here now you might be wondering what is this argument that i'm passing well this argument is nothing but the pattern of a url so if i put this something like slash it means that every time you get into this and this is the pattern of a url then it has to run this method and if instead of this if it says hi then the url pattern should be so and so followed by hi as extension we'll see how that works what we'll do now is let us quickly run this application to do that all i'm going to do is run this and now as you can see here i'm getting this url so let me copy this over here and paste it on my browser over here now if i hit enter you'll see that we have a hello world now let me do one thing let me quickly change this part over here into hello or let it be hi and let me save this and now let's see what happens over here the reason what's happening now is our server has stopped so like if you don't want to rerun the server again and again what we can do is we can turn on the debug mode so it'll be debug is equal to true so let me quickly rerun this now and let me go to this web page and let me re-roll it so as you can see a page not found but now if i do this if i do hi right you will see hello world again so i hope now you understand this is the pattern or the domain name of our web application and this is the extension whatever extension we give that gets executed so let me change this back to slash and now let's try rerun this before that let me save this although it's auto save uh, you'll see that you know our this thing is restarting here and uh, let me go to my browser now it says page not found but similarly if i do it just the slash you'll see hello world now what you saw now is that like we have hard coded this hello world over here although there is nothing wrong with it but it's a very bad practice to have this written down so now what we're going to do is we want to incorporate an html file obviously as is a web development html and css is something which is used so we want an html file to have over here so what we'll do is all we need to do is we are going to import something called as template that is render template and this render template will be present over here so return render template and within this we are going to pass the name of our html file and as this is a common practice among the developers what we are going to do is we will not directly create an html file over here instead we will create a folder which says templates and then we'll hit enter and within this folder we'll create a file by the name as index.html and now what we're going to do is as we come back to this i'll just write the name of a file that is index.html and let me rerun our program now let's see if there is any errors so let us now go to our web browser and try loading this perfect so now this is directing us to an html page Let's now quickly fill our HTML page here. Let's go to our index.html. So what you're going to do here is we'll use HTML. We'll call this. We'll give title for this as model deployment. And in, within the body, let's give a heading tag. So model deployment and some paragraph. Let's say we have linked our HTML page. Let me quickly save this and let's now see what happens in our web browser. So as you can see, the name has changed here, model deployment, model deployment, and we have linked our HTML page. So with this, as you can see, we have successfully linked our HTML page. Before we move on to creating our model or anything ahead, there are a couple of basics that is expected of you to know. Imagine a scenario wherein you want to provide the input from the end user or that is from HTML page or you want to take the input from the end user. So in that case, we'll use something called as Jinja tags. Jinja is something which is used to write Python like code in our HTML. So to do this, it's pretty simple. First off, we have a couple of things to keep in mind. So here we'll be making use of something called as forms. So we have forms and these forms have two things. 
that is a get method and a post method we'll be making use of post method over here so now what we'll do is let's take an application this action over here represents where our page should land so we'll just give the page that we want our land to be something like a new html page let me create a new file here we'll give the name here as submit.html and now what we'll do is we'll just type here submit and now what we'll do is we'll create some input layouts so we have input the text of this would be something like text let's see where it is we have to give the name for this so it will be user name we can ignore the id for now and we can also give a placeholder username and to submit this button we can have input submit button so let's see where is our submit we can ignore the values for now so now what we'll do is this is how we take the information from our python file this is just the html now we have to capture this in our app.py or in our main python file so for this what i'm going to do is first off we'll go to this hello world and now we'll create a new function over here at app.route and then we'll give the pattern so what is this pattern that we have given here submit so let's say sub and now we'll define a method def submit and now what we'll do is first off we have to import a module over here there's a request and now in order to see whether we have included this or not so we have if request dot method if this is equal equal to post i hope you know why we are getting this post that's because the method that form that we have used here is post right so we'll give post over here as well and just correction here it's going to be uppercase and now what we're going to do is if the method is post then we want name is equal to request dot form and now the name of our form like it's going to be username so this is the name right so we're going to pass username and this is going to be a dictionary so we'll pass this over here and finally what we're going to do is we also have to mention this over here methods is equal to post so if this is the situation we have this and now what we're going to do is return then we have render template we want this sub.html to be executed so we'll write sub.html and now if you see closely we want to see which image like now we are sending the data from python file to html file here we have taken the data from html file to python file let me just put down as a comment here dot py and now what we are trying to do is we are trying to render whatever information that we have got from dot python file to html file so now what we are going to do is when we return this we'll have name and this would be equal to the name that we have here this name is totally independent you can give name or let me change it to n to avoid confusion and let me give name over here and now we'll come down to our submit page over here and first off we'll write html and now we'll give some name of our document here submit page let's see what we have given here so now what we're going to pass here is we are going to pass h6 or something some random stuff and now we're going to use ginger tags over here and here we'll just give the name of our parameter so the name of our parameter over here is n so as you can see it's n so we'll pass n over here and let me quickly just give a cross check over here now submit.html and this would route to sub so let us now quickly execute our code and see whether it's working or not just to give you a good look what we'll do is enter your name so let us now execute our code and now let us go to our web page and reload this maybe we haven't saved this so let me quickly save this here so let me just see if you have made any mistake here so let me save this and this once again and let me run this now let me copy our url so now you can see we are getting this form enter your name so i'll enter my name as janet and let me hit and now once i hit submit it should redirect me to a new page and displaying my name so now we are getting this username this is because we have given the wrong name here so let me quickly fix that up it might be a small typo so we have username so what i'm going to do is copy this part here 
so as you can see I've missed out an R here and let me save this and let me save this over here and save it let's rerun our server and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reload this and pass a name and then hit submit so as you can see here our name has come out and yeah so our website is working as you can see we are shifting from one page to the other page so now that you know how to work with class let's build a simple machine learning model where we'll be predicting the marks of a student given the number of hours they have spent and then what we're going to do is we're going to combine this model of ours with our class let me quickly move to my code editor for that so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to use jupyter notebook so i'm going to just go for collab Although you don't need this because this is a pretty simple model. So what I'm going to do is let's have file new notebook. And let me connect this to a server here once. So now what we're going to do is first off we'll import our data set here. So to get our data set we'll just upload it from here. So this is our demo file. And now here we have two of our data set. So let me copy them and upload it. So pretty small file. So now what we are going to do is we are going to import a couple of libraries import pandas as pd and then we need numpy as numpy and then finally we have matplotlib as plt and we also need a couple more libraries to train our model but we'll look into that later so now what we are going to do is we'll execute this code over here and now we have to read our data set so we'll give x let me give it as uppercase x is equal to pd dot read csv and now we are going to pass our x value so let me copy the path and provide this over here similarly we'll do it for y and now we'll copy the path for y and let me now execute this let's have a quick peek into what is present in our data so x dot head and let me execute this as well so now we are getting certain values and similarly let's see what is y representing here y dot head so pretty cool these are nothing but the numbers so now what we're going to do is we're going to capture the values of our x so x is going to be that is a data frame x dot values this will give us a numpy array similarly we're going to do it for y y dot values so now we'll visualize our plot let's see how it looks like so in order to visualize this we'll have plt dot scatter all this is not required for you when you are creating this we are just trying to simulate that we are creating a model in a real time. So plt dot scatter, and now we are going to pass our values x and y. And now what we'll do is plt dot x label. This is nothing but number of hours a student studied, and then y label. This would be nothing but marks. So fine, and plt dot show, and let me execute this. So as you can see here, this is our data set. This shows number of hours a student has studied and this is the marks over here and the reason why we have negative values is because we have normalized our data. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a model. So to create a model, this is something that we have to install Not install. If it's not present, then you can just do pip install sklearn or else all you need to do is from sklearn dot linear model import linear regression and let me execute this once again. And now to create our model, what we'll do is we'll create an instance of a linear regression. Model is equal to linear regression. And yeah. And now to train our model, all we do is model dot fit. And now we are gonna pass our values that is x and y. And now what we're gonna do is we will predict the value model dot predict. And let's give any random values over here. Let's say our student has studied like one hour and so we are getting this error. That's because we have to pass this in a shape. The reason why we are getting the error is because we are passing a scalar value. So what we'll do is we will create a block here and we'll say X test. And now we'll have np.array and now here we'll give the input of value. So I'll give here marks. And now what we'll do is x test is equal to x test dot reshape. And here we are gonna pass one comma one. And the marks, let's give the marks here. Let's say a person has studied like two hours and let me 
execute this and let's pass x test over here and let's execute this so as you can see now it's totally working fine and yeah so now what you're going to do is we are going to incorporate this python file in our application so to do that first off let me come back to my visual studio code let's create a new a python file and make sure this python file is present within this directory it's, it's present in the same directory as this so now let's say marks.py now make sure you have everything installed in your virtual environment or in your python so first thing let's see what we're going to do i'll be going to and fro here so first off we're going to have this and let me get down here to my vs code and paste it similarly we're going to copy this although we can download this as a pdf you know that will still open as a jupyter notebook so what i'm going to do is just for the simplicity sake let me read it here we don't need all these values oh yeah we need x dot values and even y dot values and similarly y is equal to y dot values we won't be plotting this we obviously do need the model we paste it over here similarly we have to perform the fit because it's going to train the model most of the times if your model is pretty huge and complicated what you do is you save the model and you just load the model that is the .h5 file as we are using a pretty small and very basic example so we'll just train it here and then we are going to provide this marks and also finally the predict so now what we are going to do is we are going to pass all of this in a function so over here we'll say def marks prediction and then this will take up an argument over here that is nothing but x test right so we'll say marks and now let's give a proper indentation for this we won't be needing this part over here and now what we're going to do is we'll just pass the marks so we'll call the function this is what the function would return the prediction of marks and now we'll just call the function tef to be just marks prediction and the argument that it would take is the marks so but before we get this marks we obviously have to perform this part here because we want it to be in a proper shape and that is done by this part here okay looks good so now all we have to do is we are going to pass marks here and now every time we call this function it will return marks over here so now what we are going to do is we will integrate this so this is all there is over here about creating a model now in order to use this model in our this file we have to import this for that what i'm going to do is import marks i hope it looks good and now let me quickly clear a couple of things here first off we obviously need some input from the end user we have to take how many hours did this user study it. so what we'll do for that is enter your marks let's give some like some sassy name here we'll say predict your score so predict your exam score and now let's give a caption here enter the number of hours you studied and now what's going to happen is we have a form here it says type so we can keep it as text or we can also change it to a number so here will be our studied and then we'll give a placeholder name as our studied and then you hit submit and we don't want this to go to a new page we want it to be over here and we'll see what we can do about it and now let's go back here let me close this part so now what's going to happen is as we're going to stay in the same page we need to get this part so first off if request dot method is equal equal to post if this is the case then i need ours so the number of hours is going to be request dot form and we are going to pass the name so let's see what name we have passed over here so it's ours so let me copy this and paste it over here and now what i'm going to do is before we print the number of hours in our html page let's print it over here so first off let's import our model so it's going to be marks dot name of our function marks prediction i hope that's the one so yeah it's marks prediction 
and max prediction takes the argument that is number of hours and now we'll store this as one variable let's say max fair enough and now what we'll do is so now we'll print our marks here so we don't need this as of the moment i would just comment this off all the way from here to here and let me save this save this here as well and let's run our program before we execute our program there's a thing that i have missed we have to put app dot route and as well the methods so it will be methods and then we'll pass a list saying post and we'll save this here so here it says no module found called sklearn the reason why we're getting this is because we haven't downloaded this it's pretty simple all we'll do is we'll go to our virtual environment here and we'll do pip install sklearn and hit enter so let us now see what happens let me quickly execute this here it says marks is not defined so let's get back to our python file here so we have marks all right let's see where we are going wrong here it, it must be a small error due to you now we are not defining our argument so we have marks here so we are loading our x data marks So the reason why we are getting this marks not defined error is because we are calling this function in this marks part here itself. But we don't want this. We want this function to be called only when we are providing the marks and that is through HTML. So here I have done some changes. So we have marks or predictions and I have changed the name over here. So now what we're going to do is let's see whether our model works or not. So let me quickly run our code here. So here it says marks is not defined. That's because we might not have deleted this. So let me save this once again. And let me save this over here as well. And let's execute our code now. It's pretty important that you save your file or change this to auto save. So now what we're going to do is let's see what how our application would look like. So we have to enter a number of hours you studied. So if I put number of hours like five and then I hit submit. So now what it will say is we expect a print to be printed out over here. So we're getting some value which is generated over here. So similarly, if I put some any other random number here, something like zero hours, it would be something like three or something like that. So as you can see, we are getting a value over here. So now what we want is we don't want this value to be present here. Instead, we want to pass this value to a HTML file and then we want to print it. So what we'll do is we'll put here we'll say mk is equal to marks predicted and then we'll also pass this as an argument here m my marks and then this would be nothing but mk and now what we're going to do is we're going to go for html over here and right after the forms what we'll do here is we will take a jinja code and then we'll just pass the name that is nothing but my marks let's see if you have done any typo okay it should look good and now what we'll do is we'll also put here some random statement something like a paragraph your predicted marks are and then we have my mark so let me quickly execute this once again let me save this and let's see how this would look like so let's go back to our browser here and let's reload this okay, so we are getting this old value like we, i don't want this i just want to see this only when i have entered the mark so what I'm going to do is I'll write a if condition here. So we'll go over here. We'll write a if condition. So for that, all we'll do is we'll use a ginger tag over here. If marks, that is my marks. If this is the case, then show this part over here. And then we'll close the if statement here. This will be as simple as end if. And let's save this and also save this as well. And let's stop our server and rerun this from the start. So before that, let's close this part over here. So here, as you can see, it says this site can't be reached. So now what we'll do is we'll run our application now. So what we'll do is let's get back here. Let's reload this. Okay. I think there's a small error here. Let's quickly fix that up. So what I'm going to do here is if my marks so let me copy this up 
paste it here. Okay, so let's save this. Maybe the file wasn't saved. Let's save this once again and let me save this over here. It will restart. And let's now go to our browser here. Let's put four. So what we can do is apart from this is we can try to restart this once again. Let's take a new tab and paste it over here. So here it says local variable MK reference before assignment. My marks the local variable before assignment. Maybe we are getting an error here. Let me quickly do some changes. Okay. So now let's try running this up. The reason why we are getting this is because it's expecting an input over here. So what I'll do is as of now I'll remove this. Let me save this part here and save this as well. And let me run this once again. Okay, so let's try saving this up. There might be a small error. So now what we'll do is we'll go to our website, reload this, and we'll give number of hours I studied. So you know, if I put one, you can see here that we are getting number of the marks that I may end up getting is 84%. So this is all there is about creating a model and integrating a model with a flask. So moving ahead, let us now talk about Heroco. So what is Heroco? Well, Heroco is a cloud platform as a service that supports several programming languages. Being one of the first cloud platforms, Heroco has been developed since 2007 when it supported only Ruby programming language. But now it supports languages like Java, Node.js, Scala, Python, PHP, and Go. You see, Heroco is a cloud service provider whose popularity has grown in recent years. Heroco is so easy to use that it has become a top choice for many development projects. With a special focus on supporting customer focus app, it enables simple application development and deployment. Since Heroco manages hardware and services, businesses that use Heroco are able to focus on perfecting their apps and not on infrastructure that supports them. And also a point that I would like to mention, Heroco gives us a free domain name and a cloud storage so that we can deploy our application. All right, so let us now move to my browser and show you how we can create our account in a Heroco. So first off, what we are going to do is we are going to type Heroco. And now we'll just click on this over here. And then we'll sign it up. So we'll quickly quit this and sign up. So it says we're going to add some couple of information here. So let me quickly get that done. All right. So once you're done with this, so once you have put all your credentials, all you're going to do is you got to go back to your email and then you'll be prompted to set your password. And once you're done with that, it's pretty simple. You just have to put set password and log in. So this is how you would create your Heroku account. So now let's see what happens. This is the basics. This is how it would look like. Now, as we don't have any projects at our disposal, what we're going to do is we are going to create a new project. And we'll say marks. So we'll say something like marks prediction. So we have this marks predictions. Then what we'll do is we'll just create an app. Now over here, Heroco allows us to deploy our model in one of three ways. Either we can use Heroco Git, we can connect it to GitHub, and we can also have a container. You know, using Heroco Git, it's pretty simple. You just need to follow these steps. Paste these commands in your command prompt, CLI. And another popular way to do this, or the easier way to do this, is by uploading your code to the GitHub. So in order to do this, you have to connect to your GitHub, whatever is your GitHub repository, which we will be doing it in a while. And before you can upload your code to the GitHub, we have a couple of things to do with our code. So first off, what we are going to do is, so we'll get down to our command prompt. So let me quickly clean this up, CLS. And we are in the same repository now. And over here, we're supposed to install two important files. One of the file is responsible for installing all the required documents or the libraries that would be going in. And other one is the important file that would represent where our application would start off. So let's get that done now. So what you're going to do is, We'll start off by installing this package called as Unicorn. For that, all you need to do is pip install G Unicorn. And what this does is this G Unicorn is responsible for creating a server within our code. This G Unicorn is the one which is responsible for connecting our code with this Heroku. So let me hit enter. I've already installed this. Now, apart from this, what you're going to do is you need something called as proc file. In order to create your proc file, so let me first show you what exactly is a proc file. First off, you'll have a proc file. The way you create proc file is go to any of your code editor and click here file 
and then just type proc file. So P has to be in uppercase. Then you'll be typing P R O C F I L E. Okay, and then hit enter. And as you can see, I've already created that file. And within this proc file, what you're gonna type is web genicon app colon app. This app over here represents the file that it should start executing from. That is nothing but app.py. And within the app.py, it will tell you which method. So this one, it's capturing this part. And if this part was app2, then you would have written app2. And we won't be changing that. It's totally up to you to write the way you want. And apart from that, you also need a requirements.txt. Okay, so the requirement.txt is kind of important. The reason is because on the Heroku server, we'll be installing or the Heroku backend team will be installing all of these things. So now way you're gonna install this requirements, this thing is by using pip freeze and then you'll give this symbol over here. Then you'll put requirements dot txt and then when you hit enter the file gets created. So this is all that you have to do on your system. Now in the next stage what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a repository on a github and then upload your entire code on to the github. So let's quickly see how we can achieve that. So as you can see here, I am getting down to my github repository here. So let me get down to my github and let me hit enter here. This will take me to my repository. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new repository. So let's say something like my model deployment. And once you're done with this, all you're going to do is just create this repository here. And now what we'll do is either you can use this command this way or else what you can do is you can just push your this thing here. So import code. So as you can see here, upload an existing file. So choose files and click on all the files present over here. And I'll copy this and open. So now that all our files have been uploaded, all we'll do is commit changes. And yeah, okay, let us add now readme file. So now what we'll do is it's pretty simple. Now we have to go back to our Heroku server over here. Now as we have connected to our repository, okay. And now what we'll do is we'll just look for our model that is my model and then hit search and then connect to this part. Although you have two options here, you have enable automatic deploys. This means what happens is every time you perform any changes to your repository, it will deploy it or you can also manually do it. I'll just put here deploy batch. This will take some time over here. As you can see, it will install multiple libraries and here you can see here it has detected app file. Here it says push failed. There might be a small error. So let me quickly fix that up. So let us do one thing. Let's try deploying this once again. So deploy batch. So now it has detected this branch over here. Let's see what happens. So yeah, app file has been detected and it's installing all the required libraries here. So as you can see here, it says done and we are ready to deploy our Heroku app. So this is how it works. So as you can see, we have successfully deployed our model. So with this, we come to the end of our session. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you have any further queries, please do mention them in the comment box below. Until next time, goodbye and take care. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!